I sleep when I walk, and I wake when I talk. When I eat my roast dinner, I am. Well, guess what? It's commuter time. It's it's the one uh, the one objective test I reckon I can perform on an unlocked 23 BMW MR. The one objective test is is this a good commuter bike? Because I figure I don't need to be doing more than eight and a half thousand RPM on my daily commute. And of course I've taken a few bikes, past and present, on this commute ride, which is my 20 odd minute, half an hour ride from home to work. And uh, it's a great little, a great little test of the commuter ability of this wonderful machine. First thing I'll tell you, is that it's really light to um, maneuver around the garage really easy good turning circle much better turning circle than the uh, Tawano uh, so moving it around the garage in tight places easy peasy and it's light so certainly beats the rocket 3R in that, in that department so yeah um, easy to maneuver and then of course on the bike nice and light I've got the uh, by turbo steering damper set on 10 out of 15 clicks, which reduces the speed of the steering a little bit. So I do notice that, but you know, I can easily just reach down and turn that little dial anti-clockwise and um, I'll have a nice light steering commuter bike again. So that's not an, not, a, not an issue. And of course, I don't have to worry too much about high speed wobbles on a inner city commute. Riding position for the commute, excellent. As I've discussed in previous videos, this thing's really comfortable. Okay, really, really comfortable. If you're worried about buying this bike, is it too aggressive? Am I gonna get sore on it? Well, as a six foot four person, uh, I, I'd have no aches and pains riding this bike. Yes, I've got risers on the steering, on the, uh, on the bar, and yes, I've got uh, the pegs in a more relaxed position. Piece of cake two very easy modifications even for a novice like me and uh, here yeah, easy comfortable um, the finding neutral really good and guess what the MR does not overheat I've ridden it for decent chunks uh, in you know commuter traffic it does not overheat it does not get hot uh, no BMW that I've ever owned actually has got hot, not compared to Ducatis anyway. One, the one exception to that of course being the Multistrada which does not get hot, but look this does not, now the Tuono by now, at this intersection would be shitting its pants. It'd be chugging, it'd, it'd stall, it'd overheat. There is an overheating problem with the Tuono, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, and I will mark that bike down as a commuter bike accordingly. I think when I did my commuter review of that, it was in the honeymoon phase. Uh, but compared to this, I suspect it is a distant second in the commuter stakes, mainly because of the overheating. Uh, that's a real problem. So this one doesn't overheat. Sitting in an intersection with no problems, that is actually really cool. The initial tip in at these slow speeds is best of any bike I've ever ridden. Gear change is nice and smooth. Uh, one of the things I like to check out on my commute in terms of assessing these bikes for commuter ability is the visibility and look at that bang no problem at all I can look to my left and there's the the traffic uh, some bikes are easier than others to twist twist around and look this is a, about a seven and a half out of ten in that department uh, mainly because you are a little forward in the multi, when you're sitting a bit further back, it's just much easier to move your shoulders and your head to, to look left or right. About a 7.5 out of 10. The standout feature for commuting on this is the way the bike responds to all of the inputs, whether it be a small tap of the brake, a change, down change, a little bit of acceleration, turning in and out, you know, weight on the pegs, all those things. The bike responds to really, really well. 
Uh, and as this exhaust heats up, you will start to hear the pops and cracks of the new SC Projects can. It sounds really good, without being too oh no good, but it's, it's still very good. Quite satisfying, quite addictive. Uh, at commute speeds, the mirrors are fine. Uh, the moment you get above commute speeds, they're useless. That is a fact. So I might have to change them out at some stage. Oh, the brakes are so good. Uh, lane filtering, since I inverted the mirrors, the lane filtering is actually uh, pretty good. I've done heaps of lane filtering. Actually, on the way home a couple of nights ago, there was a big accident up here. I was in back-to-back -back traffic for like for an hour and had to do quite a bit of lane filtering. And it was fine. Um, these wider bars do give you a bit of a false sense of... Well, they give you a sense of width that um, does hold you back a little bit. I think the standard S1000R bar would probably be better for filtering. But in actual fact, the bike's not that wide and uh, if you back yourself, you're fine. It just takes a bit of getting used to. So I'd say a good you know, 7 out of 10 for lane filtering. Better than the Multistrata, obviously. And the Honda Africa Twin, certainly. Probably not as good as the Tuono. Certainly not as good as the Double R for obvious reasons. A little clip on handlebars on that baby. Uh, the filler up ability, I'm not going to show you that today uh, because I just can't be asked. But uh, going to, I know this sounds like a weird one, but I've had bikes that I've got really anxious about in terms of. Uh, filling them up, going to the service station. The most notable example being the Triumph Rocket 3R, which I hated filling up. You couldn't do it without spilling gas all over the place, including into the you know, like down where the hot headers are. Like, yeah, scared the crap out of me. I just got anxious every time the fuel light came on. This piece of cake, pull up to the Bowser, smashing the uh, Dudeki Mahotsu, and just go full tilt, no problem, no spillage. Filler up ability on this is a solid nine and a half. I, I drop a half a point because the tank's still a little small. But look, I mean, filler up ability is awesome. In terms of fuel economy, oh, too early to tell. Too early to tell, but it's not, it hasn't been notable. I'm not sort of sitting there worried about fuel all the time. And, uh, because it's so easy to fill up and I don't have any anxiety about filler up ability uh, yeah not an issue really and fuel economy on a little commute like this is hardly something you think about anyway so yeah uh, in terms of the the readability of the TFT second best TFT in the business uh, that's controversial most people say it's the best I actually prefer the Tuono's TFT I think they've done a wicked job of Prilia of that particularly the way you engage with it uh, this one, engaging with it, it's not that intuitive, you have to work it out, it's good, certainly miles ahead of bikes like the Honda Africa Twin, which was just frankly negligent, the way they've designed that thing, in terms of the TFT and controls. But yeah, look, it's, it's, it's good, very good. Um, you can't quite control the, look at this person, holding up the whole of peak out traffic just because. Man, the arrogance of that. Seriously, what are you doing? Um, yeah, you can't, there's not quite as many on the fly, simple controls. Just the way the Tuono's designed it, man, and they've done such a good job. I'll explain that later when we do the ride review comparison. Um, but this is uh, very good without being great in terms of the, you know, controls and stuff. Uh, these people parked in the uh, transit lanes in peak hour. Not good. <coughs> yes, yeah, so um, so far so good as a commuter bike. It's fun. Uh, you know, as you know, my philosophy is if you're in a commute, doesn't matter if you're commuting in traffic or in the twisties or on a track, in all those scenarios, if you're on two wheels, you've got to be able to have fun. And this bike's a heap of fun really really is uh, the the throttle response and all the other res you know, inputs and the response you get make this thing such a visceral experience I said in an earlier video it's like an extension of your body that's what it feels like 
feels like a complete extension of you. And that's partly due to the uh, response, but also the way you sit in this bike. Love the position, sitting inside the bike. I think that makes the bike feel safer and more controllable. Uh, road presence on this, I mean, this is a striking bike. It is a phenomenal looking thing. It's not like it's sort of, I mean, the white one would probably be more noticeable, visible, but the, um, the, the fact that this thing looks so menacing and evil and different, I think, gives it presence. The lighting is subtle, I like it, um, but look, you're not going to be as easy to see on a black bike that is small with sort of less lighting than on a big, you know, Honda Africa Twin with Denali D7s, for example. So just bear that in mind as a commuter. Uh, you do need to uh, bear in mind, you're probably not as visible. That said, the presence, when, once you actually do see the bike, the presence on the road, it looks sick. Really, really does. Well, I think this is possibly the best looking bike on the road at the moment. In terms of, you know, mainstream sort of production bikes. Uh, the wind, obviously on a commuter ride, you don't have to worry too much about wind. And I've got my helmet open at the moment because I'm just getting a bit hot, so I want some airflow. Um, but yeah, it's, it's at these speeds, just not even, not noticeable. I noticed the other day when I went out for a longer ride on open road. Um, anything below 120 k's an hour is fine. Above that you start getting a bit of noise, you need plugs, and I'm sure the faster you get, the harder it, the harder it gets to uh, avoid fatigue. But certainly, this is a road bike. This is designed to be a commuter bike. This is designed to have fun on every day. And I've nailed that brief. That's for sure. Uh, the other features for a commuter bike, it's got obviously automatic indicators, it's got heated grips, it's got cruise control, heel hold, I love heel hold, tire pressure gauges, all those good things that um, make a great commuter bike, this has got, so it's right up there. The one thing Ducati have done on the multi, which I wish they'd do on this bike, is the um, front and rear radar that gives you the warning lights on your mirrors for cars and your blind spots, the blind spot indicators, whatever they call them. Uh, and also adaptive cruise. Adaptive cruise is not so much of an issue for commuting, but certainly those two features I love on the multi, particularly the uh, warning lights. And in a commuting situation, they're awesome. I mean, all bikes should have it, right? Come on, give it the program. And I'm, I'm actually surprised BMW bring out a new model in this market, uh, didn't, especially a road focused model, didn't do that. Uh, I'm sure they will in the future. <laughs> but but uh, they need to because it's such a great feature. Uh, the other thing I really like about uh, this bike as a commuter, like if you're buying this bike and you're paying the, the, the rather steep purchase price, at least you're getting everything, right? It's loaded. You don't have to option it up too much. Unlike, say, the KTM where you've got to unlock all the packs and pain the neck. The, the standard features on this bike uh, and the purchase price make it make a decent value. Sound, um, can I be heard in my commute? The stock exhaust is a little quiet, no question. I got the titanium set up. And that was a bit better, but still quite quiet. This um, SC Projects can has given a nice little growl, deeper sound, and when I open it up, a decent bark as well. So I think I can be heard pretty well without it being a droney experience for the rider. No one likes a drone, and these inline fours can drone, but this setup's perfect. The a clutch feel, and in particular taking off from the lights. I don't know if you uh, if you've seen my video, my short and probably quite poor video. <laughs> On the S1000R test rod I had, I complained a lot about the clutch, and it might have been bike specific, but geez, getting that thing off the line was really, really hard. It was like, I felt like a learner driver, driving for the first time in a manual, and bunny hopping along with my clutch. Like, it was 
so hard to get off the line. Uh, and maybe it was just the setup on that particular bike. This is a piece of cake, probably the easiest launching bike other than the automatic Honda Africa Twin that I had, DCT. In terms of manual bikes, this is the easiest launching bike I've ever owned. So easy. And that 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 kind of encapsulates the whole experience. It's an easy bike to ride, very rider friendly, smooth and integrated. It's an integrated machine. Everything works together in unison. Love it. Love it. So is the BMW M1000R a good commuter bike? I tell you, it is a great commuter bike. I, it is one of the very best. Uh, downsides, the obviously no luggage, and frankly, I don't want to put bags or um, big ugly luggage on this because it would spoil the look of it. I've got my backpack on. I've got my little tank bag here, which is just a, oh shit, we're done, undone. Shit. Holy God, I've got bloody valuables in there and it's undone. Good one. Um, so I've got this little tank bag here, which is, you know, keys, wallet, uh, you know, some basic gear for my cameras. I've got the SW Motec system as well I could put on this with much bigger bags, but I don't, I don't feel the need on this bike. This is not going to be a bike I'd probably take too many overnight trips. Uh, although if I do, I can chuck the SW Motec on there. Um, but, you know, I look... For a day trip or even one overnight trip with a backpack on my back you know fine but yeah obviously it's not a it's not a an adventure bike you could bag this up no problem but it looks shit so, so and i've got this bike for different reasons i've got my multi strata for the really good stuff long stuff but if you just wanted one bike and an all-rounder could this be it absolutely there's heaps of accessories you put bags on and if i I don't need a budget for one bike, and this was it. That's what I would do. I would, I would bag it up. The iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge. Shame it's an overcast day. This has been a particularly ch a fast commute today. Um, might be time shortly for a little bit of Exodus, which, as hopefully you've worked out, is my own music that I've recorded, written, published, produced myself. I play all the instruments. Here we go, a little bit of Exodus. CBD in Sydney, the uh, Crown Casino building, I think that one is, the big, the big sucker. Lots of construction going on in the CBD, which has bounced back quite nicely after COVID. Sydney CBD is actually in pretty good, pretty good condition, unlike some of the other CBDs post-COVID around the world, it's going okay. And very shortly you'll get the view of the iconic city harbour with the opera house and the bridge in picture my signature move on my commute just get past this vehicle here so you can enjoy the views of the magnificent sydney harbour on the m1000r Yeah, great commuter bike. We'll do some, uh, on the ride home this evening, I'll show you the night vision. Let's check out how good the headlights are. I've got a funny feeling this has got those uh, cornering lights on it. I could be wrong, I don't know. I, the other night I noticed going around a corner, it got brighter. Could be a figment of my imagination. Don't know, we'll find out later. But um, yeah, we'll do some uh, night riding. 
show you some pictures of the of Darth Vader in the dock. Well, the other thing, really low speed when you're chugging along behind cars. Really, really, really low speed. The stability is awesome. You can actually sit at a light and not have to put your feet down for quite a while. It's such a balanced motorcycle. And you don't get a whole lot of fatigue either at those sort of stop-start um, clutch-in, clutch-out sort of scenarios. So, you know, ultra-low speed manners on this are really, really good. What a bike. Could this be my favourite? I don't know. We're going to do a test against the Tuono hopefully next week when this is uncorked. That's going to be awesome, by the way. And then we're going to test against the Multi. We'll do a three-way test, and we will declare an Exodus favourite uh, at some stage real soon. This is certainly becoming a contender. Look at that. Harley, you're so good. He's so good, this guy. Love Harley. He's my bestie. I've got to tell you a story about Harley another time. See you later.